Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Shark here with a 2v2 for you today on Campbell's Convoy between two mixed teams. So as the Axis, we have Dromeda from Canada, ranked number 276 with the DAC, using the Italian Combined Arms Battle Group. And then Donkey from the USA, ranked number 264 with the Wehrmacht, using the Mechanized Battle Group. On the Allied side, we have Hydra 71 from America, playing as the Americans, ranked number 138, going Special Operations. And then his teammate White Wolf from Britain, uh, rank number 681 with the Brits using the Indian Artillery Battle Group. As with a lot of my 2v2s, I have my buddy Spades casting this one with me. There's a lot of interesting discussion here as several players riff on kind of standard meta builds and the battle goes back and forth. This is a super fun game to cast. Hope you enjoy. And with that, we're on to the video. All right. So what we got here, the axis on the left side of the default map view Right in blue, we have Dromeda playing as the DAC. I apologize if I mispronounce your name. And then in teal, we have Donkey uh, playing as the Wehrmacht. Then opposite on the allied side, the right side of the default view of the map, we got uh, Hydra 7-1 playing as the Americans in red. And then his partner White Wolf in purple as the Brits. And so uh, we see a 250 light carrier coming out for Drom to start. Uh, crowd, yeah, no, not a crowd chasing. Ket and Crod coming out for Donkey. And then it looks like Hydra's going to start with some rifles uh, and White Wolf with the Vickers. And it looks like uh, <laughs> it looks like these guys uh, have played a couple of games before. Um, <laughs> but they're not, apparently they're, uh, they're not a ranged team. So this should be interesting. All right. So Spades, you play a lot of twos. Talk me through your approach on Campbell's Convoy. So Campbell's Convoy has a lot of opportunities for light vehicle play, which is highly advantageous to early allies using dingoes and jeeps simply because of the wide open nature of the field. Lots of maneuverability, easy to get away uh, with the speed advantage that most of the allied vehicles have. The 250 is a staple. You're definitely going to need it with the 259 upgrade. Mm -hmm. It's most certainly meta right now. Yeah. Oh, and so you're actually seeing uh, Drom is going into Bersalieri. So um, it's a relatively meta uh, ones build, although he's floating a fair amount of manpower. So I'm interested in seeing. Uh, maybe he's just going to plop down. No, he, he was waiting for his second squad of Bursas. Okay. So it looks like he's going to use Bursas for map presence, although this squad here immediately runs into two squads of riflemen. Yeah, they are not going to win that. And they actually just retreat immediately. Meanwhile, this half track up top forces away the scouts who retreat before they lose uh, too many models. Yeah, 250 is like the natural counter to the scout squad. It just burns them down and takes like no damage. Oh, <laughs> sappers take quite a bit of damage. MG42 and Vickers facing off. Here comes a slightly later dingo. Uh, going with the Vickers first slows down that deployment, but it should kick this Ketten off oh, the field. Ketten, if the dingo chases, there it goes. Ketten Crod knocked out, so good pickup for Wolf. MG42 turns to face, but doesn't get on the rifles in time. And now the dingo's here. The Grens don't have the tech for uh, for the Panzerfaust yet, so no real threat to the dingo. Half tracks still doing work, and actually, the drums getting combat half tracks out. Meanwhile, Hydra is teching grenades, so he looks like he's trying to... Yep, there it is. There's the sticky. Oh, that half-track is done. Panzer Pio's ditch in time, and now two squads of bursts come up. Looking at the map right now, is very strange why Hydra decided to go with an early mortar. Uh, if that he's playing against Dak. The nades, smart tech. Mortar seems to slow down his momentum. Yeah, Dak and Bursas, right? Who, by default, try to play aggressive. Um, yeah, and actually, the Allies, it looks like they're going to have pretty considerable fuel control here early on. The Bursas are trying to decap the Allied fuel, but Dingo and Rifle is moving to push them off. So I think they'll get the decap. An increased mobility of a British player with the Dingo to be able to assist his ally helps for this build faux pas that Hydra put together with the, the mortar. Yeah. Now Hydra, it looks like he's using the auto fire on the mortar, which is recently nerfed in the latest patch. You're going to want to use the barrage as often as possible. And he definitely needs to get a med tent up. 
Um, because you can see his scouts are just getting burned down. They didn't start the engagement with, with much help. The nope. trouble I see with the mortar for him trying to barrage is, just like you said, the Bursas are a highly mobile unit, so trying to find those opportune barrage moments is going to be rough. Yeah, and this MG42 gets kind of caught out in the open. It's going to retreat, but it's going to take a lot of damage from this dingo. Oddly enough, Dro decided to go with an MG34 even after seeing the mortar, so he kind of played into Hydra's hand, making the later game slightly easier for him. And it, it looks like he's going to play into the tier 2. He's got the fire support elements coming out. Dingo gets smoked by a Panzerfaust, meanwhile. Uh, so the Dingo... Oh, Pioneers get gunned down by an infantry section. That's that new TTK in play. So Hydra's locked into my favorite battle group being the Special Operations. It gives you access to one of the most frustrating loiters given how quickly it hits the field. Uh, the anti-infantry loiter by the oh, U.S. is sappers very frustrating. Gun down. This MG-34 is doing a lot of damage. They almost finish off another few section. The bursts are going to go for the kill. Yeah, I, I remember us talking about this and, and I know that you really hate the special ops anti-infantry loiter but i have to tell you with a flak for on the field i don't know that it's going to be all that effective white wolf he's going for the infantry training he only has two infantry sections on the field right now and so maybe he's going to play into foot guards uh, or something else uh here in the future and he's got a 15 cwt out as well Another interesting lock-in here by Hydra is that he chose the Pack Howitzer call-in weasel. So instead of getting that early vehicle, which could have provided some field presence for him, either being weasel or going armored with a jeep, uh, he's going with a Pack Howie weasel eventually. I mean, I think that makes sense. If you don't get the weasel out immediately, right, and you don't get, like, you don't use it in the early game, I think getting it and being able to call the Pack Howitzer out is is a win. I agree. There we go. Nice smoke onto the MG42. That allows the infantry section to soft retreat. Bursas get forced off by rifles and pine or engineers in the middle. Another squad of bursas come up and try to engage at range. So drums got yeah. This mortar out. for Hydra is going to do some heavy lifting to help alleviate some of the pressure on White Wolf, who doesn't have any form of indirect currently. Yeah, and actually Panzer Grenadiers just showed up to force off that Vickers. I think it's interesting. So Drum did the veteran squad leader upgrade, right? So uh, obviously doesn't bolster his best area. That's unlocked through the battle group. It does provide an incoming damage or at least received accuracy uh, buff to the Bursas. But I kind of wonder if he plans on back teching for a couple of uh, Panzer Grenadiers as well. Um, I, I worry about leaning too hard on the Bursas because from an anti-infantry perspective, they don't scale as well against rifles late game. They're definitely not going to scale against commandos uh, or the British infantry. And then they don't have the utility of the Panzer Grenadiers. So normally when I see like high level DAC players use the best of the area, it's in combination with the Panzer Grenadiers. Here comes a burst of nade. Does a ton of damage, but doesn't drop a model, which has got to be frustrating. Oh, here's the 8 rod. So, looks like we're going to see the pretty meta 8 rod plus Panzer Grenadier Company build from Donkey. Uh, first shot from the 6 pounder whiffs, giving him time to pop smoke and back up. You know, Hydra's pushing in the center here. He did get the pack howitzer out. So, maybe the reason for the mortar. Oh, these engineers. That, yeah, half pack's not going to let them get away. So maybe... <laughs> yeah, so they're going to trade a half track for engineers. You know, I, I think it looks like Hydra is prepping for the long game, right? Pack Howitzer, Mortar. 
And he's actually guns. playing. He's playing a very defensive posture for his ally. White Wolf invested overly in his infantry early game with uh, the uh, veteran upgrade for his uh, infantry sections and also getting Brens on them. But he doesn't have that many infantry to justify those upgrades so quickly. And he even got healing before he managed to get enough fighting force onto the field. Yeah. Oh, one spot of bursts go down. So yeah, we're we're seeing just how unforgiving the TTK updates are. Yeah, I, but I agree with your point. I think it's interesting. So you got a U.S. player that's playing very defensive and not making use of the rifles. So maybe he plans on getting some commandos out here in the late game. Then you got the British player investing heavily into infantry tech, but not the infantry themselves. And you're starting to see the results of that. If you look at the map, the corners of the map owned by the Axis. And that munition advantage is going to help considerably. Oh, Semavente on the field. That's interesting. I haven't seen one of those in a, a minute. It's a rarity. Alright, and now we see the heavy mortar out for White Wolf. So maybe he'll invest in some Gurkhas here. Although their, their timing window to be really effective is closing fast. Bigrens take a bunch of damage from the indirect, but only lose one model. But yeah, it's going to start to get really dangerous between that heavy mortar, the pack howitzer, and then the uh, the 81. <laughs> and uh, one of the CWT trucks has been turned into a Polston, which right now looks like White Wolf's kind of keeping in the rear as anti-air. Um, it has. I would be interested in seeing uh, now that it's been buffed uh, and it's got extended range and stationary. You know, is it effective to be used to, like, zone out part of the map? It has an impressive time to kill against infantry that aren't in cover. I've seen yeah. that with a couple of experiences myself. Yeah. It, it's just an interesting approach here. So the allies are very comfortable letting the Axis kind of own the flanks, and they're pushing up through the center, playing together, which uh, typically works better in 2v2 than playing, like, paired 1v1s. The allies are going with a turtle shell approach where they're very team weapon, support weapon heavy, uh, not a lot of mobility, and they're just trying to lock down the center with uh, pack howies and heavy mortars. Lots of indirect. Yeah, which, I mean, in team games, that strategy can work. There the the lack of investment there. in anti tank is what's going to cost the Axis a whole lot of problems. Well, and I would say they also need to make sure they invest in artillery. They have a naval worker coming out, which would be a nice counter. But this ally push is going to work. Commandos force off Bresilieri on the north side of the map. And now you've got the Brits pushing onto the Axis fuel here. They get countered, but not before they decap. They're able to soft retreat back to the med truck to heal up. Vickers coming up to cover. Try to push off these grenadiers. And now the rifles are going to take over the cap. Well, they were. Now they decided to back off. The double barrage on the MG42. Crushing it. Oh, Naval Warfare comes in. Oh, that AT gun is cleared. Vickers survives. But this is actually dangerous with the 8 rod here. Fortunately, uh, Hydra's got an M1 AT gun set up. And now we see a Caro out for Drom, so really leaning into the Italian battle group. And I think that's a very interesting choice considering he already teched up the tier 4. Pro is trying to play a much more mobile game around the flanks, see if he can wrap around instead of trying to break the shell. Which I, yeah, I think that's smart. I think that's how you have to approach this. Now, this Caro with the Bersilieri can do a lot of work because he's... Uh, oh, here's the white phosphorus grenade. Very conservative with that Caro. Yeah, and actually the commando is finally... Uh, but basically, they're forced away by the Panzerjägers. They do well to force up the first of the area. Now, Donkey pushing back out with Panzergrenadiers, trying to retake 
uh, this fuel point, uh, a lot of artillery coming in forces away the uh, MG-34. Another naval warfare barrage, again targeting the anti-tank guns. Oh, uh, one direct hit. But this is tough. The Axis are really struggling to to basically get out of their base and hold on to their own fuel, and a Grenadier squad dies for it. So maybe we were wrong to criticize the uh, early infantry training. With a much slower start, it certainly is paying off now. Yeah. <laughs> the Karo's gonna come up here and help the Panzerjägers knock out this cache. Eight Rod also gonna push as well. Sappers try to soft retreat into the center and run at risk of getting knocked out have to back up. So now the Allies turtle have to decide do they sit on top of the fuel or do they shift and get their fuel back. So I like this from, from Drum. He's basically forcing them to make that decision, right? Uh, he's just not fighting the battle that they want to fight. Donkey's getting another naval warfare out, which I, I don't disagree with. That's going to be the best way to impose manpower costs. First is run up to throw a grenade and then retreat. They're very low health, but it looks like they're going to get away. Here we go. I heard the pulse in in action. So as I ponder how the Axis might be able to break this turtle, we can see the acquisition of a second metal. Yeah. Well, I think Donkey playing as the mechanized, right? He's going to probably go Panthers for late game. Um, so he... Oh, the Karo gets knocked out by a sticky uh, bomb. So, but he he doesn't even need to build his tier 4 if he doesn't want to. Um, and he's got all the artillery he needs from the Panzer Grenadier Company. Uh, here comes another naval barrage. Man, look Avengers at this out the aggressive and direct as well. Uh, whiz bang about to follow up this nebel. Oh, I love it. Plus advanced logistics. Now, the Axis were able to, to counter cap uh, the Allied fuel, but I think it's only a matter of time before the Axis take it back, or the Allies take it back. And so when you're sitting on that much of a fuel advantage, oh, right now, Drum's got a ton of munitions. I think once he unlocks that artillery cover, we'll probably see that quite a bit. But here comes the whiz bang. Pack 40 knocked out. MG 34 uh, is going to retreat through the hail of rocket fire and somehow survive. But the Polson moves up to a forward position, and so uh, these bursts are just going to get whittled down. So on the point of the Nebels decrewing all of his team weapons, one of the fundamental differences between Co3 and Co2 is that the team weapons don't take any damage upon, uh, I guess, still being crewed. Uh, once they're decrewed, they can take damage, but if they have a crew, they take zero damage, which makes it fairly easy for the turtle shell to continually recrew all these weapons after the Nebel destroys the crew. Yeah, and at, at moderate, uh, manpower costs as well. Um, it makes it makes it very difficult to break these turtles because these weapons don't get whittled down or be forced to repair uh, by engineers prior to being recruited. Oh, this Polson goes down to Panzerjägers. Grant on the field. The Vickers in the rear annihilated by a neighbor for barrage. But yeah, I, that is a that's a good point, and so it. You know, if you're going to obviously the naval warfare barrage helps you clear the field so that you don't have to deal with the team weapon, but in most situations you want to try to follow that up um, to either grab or destroy those team weapons to like really take it out of play. Yeah. yeah. In the current meta, if you're going to expend the effort to decrew team weapons of your opponent, ensure that you have a follow up to remove that object. Yeah. Grant going hunting. Uh, won't find the Semivente, but instead find the Bersilari. Meanwhile, on the flank, we've got some riflemen and an AT gun dealing with a Karo, uh, and the 8-Rod. The drum is now... Ooh, 8-Rod knocked out. I guess, uh, a little bit of a lapse in attention there.
And so Hydra's gonna take control of this flank. Man, both Axis players floating a ton of munitions. I wonder if Donkey, because he has so few vehicles on the field, <laughs> as we talk about, they're knocking out the six pounder. He has so few uh, vehicles on the field, if going with zeroing artillery might be the better choice, especially to help deal with this, these packs of allied team weapons. If anything, the displacement from the zeroing might buy them an opportunity to dive and clean up all these team weapons. Yeah. So both teams swapping flank uh, victory points at the moment. Also, Drum did get an, uh, an LEIG out as well, so, uh, you know, equivalent to the pack howitzer, the two of them can duel and participate in some counter battery fire. Uh, Hydra, as we take a break here, because uh, he's basically back at his headquarters healing up, recruiting. He has a second squad of commandos out, so um, I think this is actually a good uh, balance for him coming up against the way that Drom is currently built. Lots of versatility, good anti-infantry. Um, and he's a little bit more mobile, not relying on as many team weapons. Although the navels are targeting where the pack houser was set up. Meanwhile, Drom going for another Karo. And now a Brumbear out for Donkey. Um, I unfortunately don't see a weapon support center. Uh, I'd love to see Hydra side tech for the weapon support center to get the bazooka upgrade to make his uh, commander just that much more deadly. Ooh. One naval warfare was decrewed, and now commandos are coming up. And it looks like they'll be able to decrew. Yep, LEIG knocked out. But now an MG42 is here, and the Brumbear. Yep. Oh, ho, ho, ho. they need to get out of there. Fortunately, there's a grant to cover. Pack 40 chunks away at it, but is able to force the Brumbear back just a little bit. Going to use the Whizbang to potentially affirm these kills on these nevels. Looks like this is what he's thinking of. Meanwhile, on the flank, Drom is pushing into the kind of American underbelly here. Loses a flak half track, but does force the attention of the American player away. Oh, and now the naval barrage in that fuel point as well. It's going to whip. The Grant here will most likely defeat the yeah, the Semavente. But now the Grant versus the Caro, with the naval war for also shooting. A lot going on here. Foot guards pushing up the middle, annihilated by the MG42. Which is unfortunate. But Wolf's got enough resources. He's getting a second Grant out, and these little Grant Hunter Killer packs can be really dangerous with, with the two guns and their ability to uh, both take a lot of damage and then chunk away at infantry. Well, here comes the Brumbear, and the allies are frightfully short on a AT right now. Rifles go up, double sticky to get the engine crit. Oh, Versilieri knock out the American Mortar and clear the pack howitzer. Wow. It's looking extraordinarily dangerous for the Allies if the Axis can follow this up. Yeah, if they can keep the push on. Good counterattack with commandos in the center and a triple dead AT gun, which just really honestly needs to be healed. Yeah, but with the munitions, and then you've got Wolf over here kind of on the flank. With the munitions the Axes have, I'd be really worried about, like, use of artillery cover for a follow-up. Ooh. Whizbang forces the Grenadiers away. Naval War for D-Crews, that triple vet AT gun. And actually, the Whizbang takes a fair amount of damage <laughs> from the Naval War for uh, Chassis getting charred black from all the fire. Speaking of the zeroing artillery we talked of earlier, this would be an excellent opportunity to use your munitions to destroy all these team weapons guaranteed by just dropping that zeroing artillery yeah, on you, these four D crude. Yeah, you could at least drop it on, because uh, the spread's a little tricky, but you could drop it on the pack house and the heavy mortar 
they hit really, really hard. So I think that would be that's a good point, and that'd be the best way to use You're it. You're right rocking now. 780 munitions. It's worth the time investment. <laughs> yeah. All right. So allies move back out. They recrew the M1 AT gun. Yeah, I would love to see Hydra get the weapon support center, get a half track out for some forward kind of uh, reinforcement. Donkey investing now into Stoss Troopin. Meanwhile, the Brits on the flank are going to start to roll it up. Karo's in to try to counter. A sticky bomb gets off. There are two Grants now to follow this up, and I don't think the Karo's see the threat here. And so Wolf's going to be able to continue to press. Well, this one Karo is almost certainly done. It pops smoke, though. No follow-up shot. So the Grants will continue to push at the risk of getting hit with an AT gun on their flank. Do they dare go for a base inspection? Doesn't look like it. Whizbang comes in on the Brum Bear. Ineffective. Now Pack 40 knocking out these artillery pieces. Brum Bear is trying to help. Another Karo over here on the flank trying to kite these uh, commandos. With the some weapons are getting cleaned up by Donkey. Yep. Uh, now a wolf with a howitzer on the field as well. Oh, look at these commandos getting free shots at the rear arm of the Brum Bear, and the Grant's coming in as well. Oh, this Brum Bear. This might be it. I'll the, the correct without a paddle. The Grant keeps turning instead of just shooting. There it is. The 37 mil cannon in the turret finally knocks out the Brum Bear. But Drum on the opposite side is able to take the fuel. And now he's in a position to inflict some more bleed on these commandos. Nice shot from the Karo. Oh, if he's not careful, a T gun follow up shot. Doesn't. He gets out of range in time. Another Karo destroyed by the Grant Pack over here. And Hydra does it. He gets the uh, weapon support center and the upgraded rockets. Rifles force off the bursas. And Grant's on the retreat path, but with kind of the casemated gun. Well, we'll see. They One of them flips around here. And here's the Panther. <laughs> Drum just built... A fourth Karo. I don't know how many that's been total. Panther taking a lot of heat from these Grants, but giving it back out as well. So the Grants here are popping steady assault, which gives them 50% fire rate, uh, but minuses their speed and rotation. Very similar to the Panzer IV. Well, here comes some sort of... Oh, it's the Airburst Artillery onto the Repairing Pioneers. They're going to retreat and luckily get out in time. Mabel's counter barrage and then Whizbang's also going off. Hands are going to do is recruit an AT gun, but they're not going to be able to flip it around in time, I don't think. Yeah, the Hydra went for the medical half track as well. It's able to recover the the uh, pack houser that wasn't destroyed. Been sitting there a long while. Yeah, they almost knocked it out, but Donkey ended up losing his Brumbear trying to kill it. So now we've got this pack of Karos with a number of the uh, DAC Armory upgrades. White Wolf now also unlocking the 17 pounder. As well as a 5.5 artillery emplacement. Yeah. Now allies on the back foot as far as VPs go, but they have two out of the three right now. Here comes a naval. Oh, well placed onto the med half track. Forces him to back up. Bursa is at the risk of getting gunned down by the infantry section, but Panzer Grenadiers will refocus. Now, I, I think uh, Drama's done a great job pressuring with these Karos kind of across the map. Although, oh. There we go, AT gun cleared. 
Yeah, the volume with them and the rate of fire allowing him to chunk down some of these infantry and then spread out the enemy. I am, I've been impressed with his map awareness because I feel like uh, while Donkey is mainly fought kind of up the middle, Drum has been on both flanks as the DAC player. Been doing an excellent job splitting his focus and not losing all of his stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and then here comes a fifth uh, Caro. So, you expect them not to scale very well, especially against the Grants, but against these this infantry heavy build from Hydra, um, they're actually in a great spot, and they clear, they have the you know emergency repair kits upgrade. <laughs> they, as long as Dro can rely heavily on these Panthers that are going to slowly take over the field, I think it'll be all right. Yeah, well, here come two Grants looking for the Panther. Commandos square off with uh, Stas Troopin. Oh, the Grants chunk the Stas Troopin down, and they're forced to retreat. Naval Warfare comes in on the Vickers on the flank, supported by a Karo. And the Grants are going to divert, not knowing they're giving up their uh, rear and side armor to this Panther. And a Pack 40. Oh. The, the Pack 40 bounces the side armor. But the Panther hits Vet 1, and so now it gets the debuff. One more shot. 5.5 artillery is dropping on the grouping of the Paros right now. Yeah. But there, it looks like they're going to rotate to try to help this engagement with the Panther. Here comes another Karo on the, the Grant's flank. Panther continues to debuff the Karo. The Panther's going to get sticky, so at risk of going down. But the second Grant destroyed, and now here comes the Flood of Karos. And they could completely rout White Wolf's uh, army here. Med truck knocked out. They're gonna stop to focus on the Vickers. Oh. Vickers destroyed. The commandos come in to help a little bit too late and are forced to actually switch to anti-infantry roll. Knife throw hits the Pentagonadiers. Nice timing to change the engagement. Now another panther on the field, and Drum bringing his Karo train around. They try to recruit this pack 40, but immediately lose it. A number... Oh, that med half-track is at risk of going down. The commando is forced to retreat when the Karo show Devil up. Devil for good measure. Yep. Yeah. Oh, 17-pounder in the rear set up by White Wolf. Hits the Panther, but it does a lot of damage, but it doesn't kill anything. And these Karos are going to continue to try to run down the Commandos. They knock out the Med Half Track. They, oh my goodness. Commando Squad goes down as well. And it looks like they're going to find the Pulse in here. Pulse knocked out, and now they're on the flank, the 17 pounder. Oh, and here comes the Zero in Artillery. <laughs> Right onto the 17 pounder in theory. <laughs> the scatter is terrible. There you go. There are a couple of hits. All right, 17 pounder knocked out. Still recruitable. One more Grant on the field. 5.5 hit in the center VP to try to dissuade the axis from recapping, but that won't work. Uh, and now the Karos uh, with the rapid advance also capping. This grant is not going to do it. Allies pushing back to the center, but they're in real danger going down on VPs here. Captain just gunned down as he tries to take the center VP. And the Axis are going to maintain the triple cap. Arrows are repairing up on the flank. Yeah. An interesting... On both flanks. Buff. An interesting buff that those Karos have is that they have a buff that increases their reload speed by up to 30%, 5% for each nearby friendly unit. So the larger the pack becomes, the more deadly they become. Yeah. Which... Now, it should be balanced by the fact that they have limited penetration and limited armor, 
but with the health buffs, uh, yeah, that's going to do it. It took out on VPs. All right, so we'll start by kind of going over the general themes here on the Axis side. So Dromeda, playing as a DAC, Italian Combined Arms Battle Group. He starts with a very Bursillary heavy start, leans into his Tier 2, so Flak for Ling, LAIG, Pac-38, MG-34. And then, honestly, he really leans into the Carol Armados with a lot of the upgrades to finish out the game. Right? If you look at his battle group choices, he unlocks the Bersaglieri. Then he actually goes into the Semivente and the Carol Armado and then the Pact of Steel, which makes all Italian vehicles and DAC light vehicles 15% cheaper. Once he does that, he comes back over, bolsters his Bersaglieri, and unlocks the Breda 30 machine guns for him. And then for Donkey, uh, playing as the Wehrmacht Mechanized Battle Group, so he goes for a very quick tier one into tier three, right? Just a pioneer and MG42 and a Grenadier squad uh, before he goes into the Panzer Grenadier headquarters. Um, and then because he's mechanized, he unlocks the eight rod. He gets one of those out, but he doesn't over invest into it, which is interesting. And I think a good read of the room. From there, he focuses on Pgrens, Pack 40s, and Naval Warfers uh, before getting into tier four, uh, starting with Stoss Troopen and a Brumbear, and then leaning on Panthers late game to win those armor engagements. For review of the battle group, obviously he starts uh, with the raid package, he gets the 8 rod, and then once he builds his tier 4, he unlocks the panther production. Uh, meanwhile, he gets the spotting scopes, which I think is, is interesting, but probably a good choice given uh, the vehicles he has on the field. Uh, unlocks the Vespa, doesn't ever use it, and then he goes for the zeroing artillery, which we talked about in cast. And then on the allied side here, so we have Hydra, who starts uh, focusing on rifles, but only gets two rifle squads out. Um, from there, he goes for a little bit of a combined arms approach, a mortar, uh, an AT gun, before he uh, uses the pack from the Special Operations Battle Group. Um, very artillery focused, and then he ends up getting a couple of commando squads out as well to kind of replace uh, his mainline infantry. Uh, from there, he goes for the whizbang, and then honestly, that's all you really see from him. He does side tech to the weapon support center for the upgraded rockets and the healing half track, which I like. Uh, but from there, he's basically playing very infantry heavy and just trying to kind of hold on facing a, a 2v1 in the middle of the map. Um, for his battle group choices, obviously, like we talked about, he unlocks the pack howitzer uh, call in with the weasel, unlocks the anti-infantry loiter, which I don't think we actually saw, and then the whizbang production because he has his tier 4 out. Uh, on the opposite side, he does the flare, unlocks the commandos, and then uses the assault operation. But again, I don't know that we ever actually saw that in-game. For White Wolf, uh, early on he focuses on an MG and a couple of infantry sections. Again, kind of a light uh, start from an infantry perspective. Then he really goes for uh, AT, team weapons, and reinforcement in the mid game. So you see the heavy mortar, you see a couple AT guns, you see a Polston, um, another uh, uh, CMP truck out for med, uh, med support, right? And then his late game really revolves around uh, the grants, but he gets lured into some t uh, side tech as well. So. You see the 17 pounder, you see the 5.5 inch howitzer, etc. So looking at his battle group choices, right, he obviously unlocks the heavy mortar, he unlocks the uh, airburst barrage, and then the 5.5 inch uh, howitzer emplacement. Then on the opposite side, he goes for valor uh, with the infantry rather than war cry, uh, gets the Gurkhas, although he doesn't build any, and then he goes for the infantry reserves to reduce the reinforced cost of his infantry. All right, everyone, we're back. Uh, so just talking to spades a little bit about, about what we just saw here, um, pretty interesting, uh, across the board and some of the decisions that were made and some of the stuff that was, you know, meta versus off meta. Uh, and so I kind of want to open with, obviously with the allies who ended up, uh, losing this one. Um, and in particular, like white wolf, uh, making some pretty aggressive tech choices. So, uh, spades, I'll kick it over to you. Um, I know you had some thoughts on that. So. If you don't have more than two of the type of upgrade you're looking for, don't go ahead with the, the decision to do the upgrade. So for infantry training, if you don't mm -hmm. have at minimum three sections, don't bother with it. Mm -hmm. If you don't have more than two grants, don't bother with armored vehicle training. Uh, I wouldn't recommend teching nades uh, if you only have one or two sections. Uh, it's You want to invest in the field presence before you invest in the quality. So decking yeah. out in Brens is a great option if you already have the model count to support it mm -hmm. now you hit the nail on the head right and this is something uh like i noticed in my own play i have a tendency to like tech as early as possible and focus on getting upgrades but when you don't have the actual field presence to fight like you saw 
kind of in the the early to mid game the axis had both of the flanks under under control and part of the reason was the allies didn't have the combat power to push into the flanks eventually you saw hydra kind of solve that problem on his side but they weren't able to challenge kind of on the flanks of the map and the way this map is built um yeah you can turtle up in the center but that just creates a pocket that the enemy can then kind of like force you into and destroy um the other big piece of all that investment in tech uh it's a lot of fuel right and some of it ended up being semi superfluous uh i i don't know i know why he got the five and a half inch uh howitzer emplacement right he's trying to counter those naval warfers but um at the time that's not really what he's struggling with uh same thing with the 17 pounder that's a huge investment to tech into it and to get one on the field and a 17 pounder to counter caros i mean it's like trying to kill a fly with a you know sledgehammer right it's just yeah it'll do the job but it's really slow and inefficient um, I think he would have been served uh, better by having like three or four grants on the field. Um, and considering how infantry heavy his teammate was, that's really what he needed him to do, I think. Um, any other thoughts on kind of the allies approach here or anything that you, you saw from Hydra as well? Not to take another shot at White Wolf, but unless you have a pre-coordinated strategy with your ally, uh, the purchase of a reinforcement half-track or CMP truck uh, before you have more than two infantry sections is going to stymie your ability to take map presence or control unless you're overlapping on top of your ally's infantry and having them reinforce on top of you as you play extremely aggressively with it. Uh, the the timing of your reinforcement half track uh, is a is a delicate thing. Higher level players will try to delay healing for as long as humanly possible in favor of getting more things that kill stuff on the field. No, I mean it's fair with the TTK changes. You see, uh, healing is more and more important, but especially like he went the Indian artillery battle group, and he went for the heavy mortar. So you get a free CMP truck when you pull that on in the field. Um, so you get a mortar and then you just do the healing conversion. You don't necessarily need to build one separately. He ended up upgrading the Polston on one, which, um, was a little static at first. And then he was using, uh, relatively effectively to try to force, uh, basically the allies went, moved up and grabbed the axis fuel there in the middle. And the Polston was a big piece of that. But yeah, that again, some interesting choices focused on like unit quality and preservation over, over field presence that I think, uh, probably kind of bit them um a little bit on the back end yeah like as the allies it really it you need to be aggressive and try to snowball an early game advantage into late game i think uh especially with the way that the axis team here was built out uh you weren't going to be able to hold that forever um and then to your point about like having a pre-coordinated strategy uh hydra i thought did a good job of looking at what white wolf had on the field and kind of building things that were complementary, right the more the pack outs or the whiz bang um going from rifles into commandos getting the upgraded zooks getting some at guns out like i feel like he was trying to be very complimentary um but he, i think he was using he was also using a lot of upgrades right he got advanced logistics as well and i think he was just unable to get any sort of real armor on the field which uh, I think, you know, something like a couple of Hellcats uh, are a perfect counter to that Karo spam, right? Because the Naval Warfare is not going to knock them out easily. They can outrange the Karos and do a lot of damage. And if they're supported with the rifles, they're probably good. Um, but there's just, it's really tough when you don't get that early game foothold and you try to turtle as the allies, um, I think. And then the, the Axis had the right strategy to, to break them. So um back over to you uh things that you liked from uh donkey and dromeda so dromeda had an excellent strategy of trying to wrap around the turtle and work on the flanks and mm -hmm. cause the allies to make decisions that they didn't want to make which is that they're all balled up on top of the axis fuel and they want to live there and stay there and they want all the enemy units to come attack them in that position mm -hmm. so forcing them to make a choice to go and take care of their own fuel and reconnect that causes that turtle to break up which as you see the match progress you will see white wolf further and further migrate down south towards the bottom vp in comparison to his ally who gets separated out uh to the north yeah yeah that's fair uh i 
you know, I thought Donkey did a good job of being kind of the anvil here uh, and understanding his role. So uh, pack 40s, Nibble Warfers into Panthers, right, to help kind of blunt the impact of any of the like really aggressive allied pushes and then letting uh, Dramada be really aggressive, especially with the highly mobile, the Karos. So I thought that was a good balance. Um, I also like, I think he initially, because he was playing the mechanized battle group, I think he initially wanted to lean into the eight rods. And then I think he recognized fairly early on that with all the soft AT on the field that actually wasn't going to work. Like he didn't get him out early enough. And so he didn't overinvest into that, which I think is a sign of good decision making as well. Um, yeah, for Dramada, I, I thought it was interesting. I kind of expected with tier four out with all the upgrades. Um, I thought maybe Panzer threes or going armor reserves for a P4 or two. Might have been good but he really made good use of the caros keeping them together and like when they can snowball in some really really deadly uh especially anti-infantry anti like light vehicle they do a lot of work um so pretty impressive there but yeah um i thought it was a fun game do you have anything else that you want to highlight in regards to dro he did put together the upgrade tree of increased <laughs> pen survival package repair kits rapid advance uh he he decked them out with everything he possibly could have to make them as good as they possibly could be which is why they were so effective in this match yeah. so if your opponent does build correctly uh such as chaffees or some hellcats or investing in those grants more heavily than two you're going to have a much more difficult time trying to pull this build off yeah, especially, you know, those Karos against Grants without the Panther there to kind of be, uh, to eat up a lot of that damage and, and dish some out, I think suddenly looks a lot less viable. So, you know, maybe another Grant or two from White Wolf, uh, maybe a couple of Hellcats from Hydra flips this thing around uh, in the Allies' favor. Well, uh, Spades, thanks for taking the time, man. Uh, I know you've been pretty busy lately, so uh, appreciate it. Cheers. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Yeah. That's going to do it for us, guys. And uh, we'll see you all in the next one.